How's it going? So, if you couldn't tell from the video's title, today I'm gonna try and tackle the oil diffusion pump once again. Now, on all my videos, the comment section is incredible. You guys leave some really thoughtful and helpful comments. So, we're gonna rebuild that diffusion pump, but this time, as a team. <laughs> I'm gonna be going through comments and taking advice from you guys and applying that to this new build. The main theme of the video being together, we're strong. So, I got I got some comments printed out here to help me. I really would have been nice if I like numbered these or something. Uh, give me a second. Uh, let's start with the first glaring issue of that video. The memes. Let me just get this out of me, like, right now. And then we can have a clean slate. They miss y'all! Okay, uh, that'll do. I'm quenched. So two of the main things I'm gonna change on this design are I'm gonna make it smaller, so I'm using up less of the reaction chamber for a mounting place for the pump. I'm also gonna spend a lot more time making sure the stack is made correctly, because that's what's doing the work. And while yes, I am going to spend more time designing it properly, it's still gonna be made out of coffee cups, guys. <laughs> Come on, that's, that's cool. <laughs> so LRM left a very helpful comment regarding the stack and how that should be designed. And I replied to him and he actually followed up with me and sent me this. Look at that. We don't gotta design anything. He did all the work for us. Thank you. So let's take our little parts list here and go to the part getting store. By part getting store, I mean Goodwill. So profane. So once again, I did my little magpie routine and I've gotten some stuff. I don't think this is everything, but it's enough to get started. So I'm gonna start cutting this stuff up and I'll show you how the final assembly goes together. Ah. Ta-da! As you can see, I've sorted through, cut, cleaned, and deburred all the parts that I'm gonna need for this thing. So what you see here is the pump, minus the outlet. So this is how the stack is gonna go together. I wanted to try and copy the geometry on the plan a little better. It's difficult when you're making it out of cocktail shakers, but similar to the plan, this guy is gonna be shooting just a little bit off of the edge of this guy. And this guy is shooting right down on top of this guy, which that follows it pretty well. The only difference is this. But these parts just fit together so well, I just had to do it this way. So we're gonna run with this for now. And I'm gonna make it so that this stack is removable. So if we find that it's not working, I don't have to rebuild the whole pump. I'll just reconfigure the stack and see if it makes a difference. Now on the drawing, you can see on the inside of these jets, there's just holes drilled around it. And I like that. It'll make it much easier for a match precipitation rate all around the radius of this thing. So let's get some holes drilled in these guys. Holes are drilled, parts are cut. We're ready to start putting this thing together. Now, this may surprise you, but I really did not enjoy TIG welding all of that together in the last video. And it creates a problem that I didn't even know about until you guys brought it up to me. Virtual leaks. Virtual leaks are cavities which are extremely porous and have high surface area for absorbed chemicals to slowly desorb. Is that a word? Fouling any chance of getting to a high vacuum in a reasonable time i.e. it could take months or years because the outgassing rate is so slow. So, I'm not gonna TIG weld this. We need to come up with another way to fuse these parts together. Here goes nothing. Wait, that's a better idea. I'm gonna braze these parts together. So brazing these parts together, I'm gonna have to be very careful to keep them all concentric. I don't know if you remember that last stack I built. It was anything but concentric. What's the opposite of concentric? Pro-centric? I have an idea to keep the stack itself concentric, but no idea how I'm gonna get the cones on there properly. 
So I'm just going to fit these parts as close as I can using my uh, laser eyeballs and then throw the part in the lathe and use that to fix any amount of slop that we end up with. That was harder than I thought it was going to be. I threw this thing up in the lathe so I can start scotch brighten the, you know, sooty whatever off. Look at that. You know, that amount of wobble for eyeballing it? I'll take that, man. So I wasn't happy with the way that this was pointing. If you look at the picture, this stage is supposed to be pointing right at the outlet port, just about. So I went ahead and I soldered another ring in on there. And I think that gets it a little bit more faithful to the drawing. Now then, for our fourth stage in the drawing, it's actually a separate chamber from this. So I'm gonna stick this guy on here. Oh, that went on way easier earlier. Hold on. With this stage, this will be pointing directly at our outlet port on the outside of the chamber. And then these holes are just to let the oil flow back down into the bottom. So I already know this is gonna waste a lot of solder. Let's get it over with. I'd like the outer chamber to be nice and long to support this ridiculous size stack that I've built. So I got a coffee cup and a cocktail shaker. Ploop! Gonna braise them together just like this. We can go ahead and stick the stack in here. And I want this thing to be removable, but also I want it to be perfectly centered every time we install it. So, I'm just gonna stick this little bar on top and make a little catch system. That'll do. So I've gone ahead and bent up two little parts like this, and these will act... Ah, oh, shit. You know what, let me just solder it and then I'll show you. <laughs> there we go, we got two little tabs in there. Now I can slide my little guy in there. And then painstakingly, twist it into those catches. And when it's in these catches, I know that it is centered in there and these holes are, um, well, vaguely lined up. Now then, moving along. Got the goods. This took me a while to get right. There's 15 holes on these things and they all need to line up just perfect. So what I ended up landing on doing is I cut the shape out on the plasma cutter and then went over to the laser, etched a piece of wood with some circles so I could line it up, covered this thing in dicom, and then etched the center spots on with a laser and then drilled them out by hand. And yeah, that's far more work than if I just center spotted it on the plasma cutter. But those holes line up nice. So, let's get this thing installed on the pump. Right, through the magic of video editing, it's a week later and my pump body is a toilet brush. What happened? So if you didn't notice the liberal amount of solder I was using in that last shot, I ran out of solder. So having learned nothing from last time, I decided, oh, I'll just weld this part. And you know, of course, blue holes in it. Didn't want to patch them up because of the virtual leaks we've learned about. So I ordered some new solder, waited for it to come, and then built this little monstrosity. Now, didn't learn too much. I still weld at the bottom, but I did back purge, as you guys suggested, and it went pretty well. Now for the outlet port of this thing, I'm just gonna build it just the same using plumbing parts. And this, I am also not gonna braze. I'm gonna weld this because it's thicker. It's easy. You've already seen this. I won't make you watch it twice. If you'd like to watch a man struggle welding pipe fittings together, go to the last video. All right. So we've got our little outlet port on here now. Now the last thing that this thing needs before we really clean it up is the water cooling. And I'm just gonna do that using some of this refrigeration coil and you know, hopefully I can braze this on there. We're screwed, guys. We're screwed. Listen to that pathetic little whimper. I'm out of map gas in the middle of what seems to be a gas shortage. So 
Uh, I'm gonna scour every corner of this shop and the truck and cross my little fingies. I found some! Just had to go, um, liberate it from a friend's truck. I'll pay you back, man. Ta-da! Now that's all fine and dandy, but now I gotta clean the flux off of all these parts somehow. Be real nice to have an ultrasonic cleaner. Hmm. So, um, I've ratchet strapped a vibratory sander to the side of a bucket. Oh, that's awful. It'll do. Sorry, neighbors. I threw some dish soap in there to help it along a little bit, but look at that. That is some dirty water. I think this actually did something. Wow. Does it look any better? I can't tell. Well, there's definitely still going to be some hand work to do, but at least I think that must have gotten most of the flux off. Oh my god, there's water dripping everywhere. Ta-da! So I got all of these reasonably-ish cleaned up. I kind of wish that I had enough solder to solder this all the way around. One, for better heat transfer. Two, it, I think it looked cleaner than these stupid little tacks, but whatever. It's all good. So, the last thing that we got to do before testing this is to make a baffle. And rather than our little cheaty peaty baffle that I made last time, I'm going to make this thing proper. And I will be making it out of aluminum as it's much easier to machine. And as some of you have suggested, I'll be making it water cooled. So the only chunk of aluminum that I have that's big enough for this is way too big. So I'm gonna have to machine nearly an inch off of this thing. Wasteful. Oh, and look, somebody used it to whack something with a hammer. So that's, that's nice too. If you couldn't tell, I kind of freehanded this. You know, I cleaned up the slop in my mill a little bit, so this went a little better than last time, but you know, there's still some chatter in there. But it's okay. This is workable. This monstrosity is the channel for the water, and I'm just gonna go through and cap it with little pieces of aluminum and then machine the face smooth again. Also, to get rid of this little hole and have a little bit more overhang, I've got these pieces that I'm just gonna weld in place in there. So, top to it. Well, bam we did it. Now, that may be one small jump cut for you, but that was awful for me. <laughs> I welded this thing over and machined it down like a hundred frickin' times, man, and eventually I decided let's just get the part that seats on the gasket machined down and then leave the blobs in the middle, because the blobs are doing some work. But it's all sealed up. It passed the bathtub bubble test. Now, nothing to do but to put this thing together. Would you look at those parts? And as you can see, not a drop of JB Weld in sight. Get, get out of here. Now, a few of you guys have suggested that I use RC shock oil for the silicone oil. So, I got some of that. Now, it's nice not having the... Oh shit, there's some paper towel in there. No, 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 no. Get out of there, you little turd. Pretty nice not having the stack in there so I can actually fill the oil up to the proper level. That took three things of shock oil. And I don't remember those being cheap. Hope it works. So we're filled up to just under the outlet port. We can insert our stack. Hold on, we gotta make sure it's pointing the right way. We're good. Just for my own peace of mind, I'm just gonna bend these guys up a little bit. Probably not necessary, but you know, insurance. Now, and stick it all together. Now before I do that, Grant, smiley face, gave me quite a few really good suggestions, one of which being to use Viton for the gaskets. 
So I've made a couple of those on the laser. I'm gonna stick this thing together and I'll be back. So I got everything put together. It all seems good and tight. Before actually running the diffusion pump, I'm gonna pull just a boring old regular vacuum and make sure it can hold that. So here we go. Look at that, it's dive bombing quick. That is quicker than the last revision did. All right, pumps off, fingers are crossed. I'm gonna let that sit for a while. Look at that. I've let this sit for maybe 10 minutes or so and it's still holding at 270 microns, which is superb, man. Now, Grant, in his comment full of good advice, also suggested that I use helium and just spray it around the thing and you know, it'll be easy to detect a leak that way, which is smart because helium is a smaller particle so it'll be able to get through leaks much easier. By that logic, hydrogen will work even better. I don't mind the candle, it kind of started smelling funny in here, but let's, let's turn that hydrogen on. Okay, I was joking. I don't have hydrogen. I'll turn the helium on though. All right, cracked my helium. Give her. Dude, I'm, I'm surprised. Looks like my uh, extensive bathtub bubble test paid off. I'm not seeing that thing move at all. Wow, ain't nothing to do now, but uh, I should turn this off. <laughs> ain't nothing to do now, but to actually give it a proper test. Fifty-five! We're getting there! Wow! Fifty-five microns? That's much better than last time! You, sir, should be satisfied with that. But I wasn't. <laughs> you may or may not have noticed, all these clips are pretty old. I shot all of this towards the beginning of the year. Now what you just watched at the diffusion pump was one of the best runs, but it was after many, many runs. That's why I, there wasn't much talking in the video. I kind of uh, lost my soul at that point, hence the annotated clip. Sorry. This project killed me, man. I was chasing those 20 microns to the ends of the earth. I tried all sorts of different things with this pump. I made a new pump. I think I got down to around 30-ish microns, which is pretty crazy good out of coffee cups, man. But I was not pleased with it and decided to just trash this video. Well, here's future me. I think it's a good video and I'm posting it as is. The real bottleneck in my system, <laughs> which for some reason took me a few months to see, is I'm using a Harbor Freight roughing pump. <laughs> like. Duh. I'm kind of throwing the fusion reactor project on the bench for a little while while I slowly start to accumulate more vacuum equipment. One of you guys actually sent me a diffusion pump. I don't know if you want your name said, so I'm not going to say it, but you know who you are and thank you. You are freaking awesome, dude. And I, I'm pretty sure I need to respond to your email. I'm sorry. I'm bad at that. And I feel as if this project was just the tip of the iceberg on my little spout of, uh, I'm not gonna call it YouTube burnout that I've been experiencing. I'm gonna call it, um, inability to stop working burnout. And my first way of combating that is taking this video, which I deemed unworthy, and deeming it worthy. This channel isn't about perfectly flushed out beautiful projects as, I mean, you all know, but I may have forgotten. This channel is about fucking up and learning. So I'm busting in here and throwing this video online to kind of guide the ship more back towards where we should be. And a diffusion pump, shut up. And a diffusion pump that pulls down to 55 microns with a Harbor Freight vacuum pump? That's damn good in my book. Sorry I didn't get 20 past me. Stop being such an asshole to yourself. Anyway, back to the video. Oh wait, <laughs> there is no outro to this video because I deemed it unworthy. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you like what you saw here, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and 
Thank you for watching.